three, two, one. I don't let the men use my tools. We grow all types of vegetables and flowers. Stop. Okay, so we got cameras. Do I need to rebed do it? Well, our role in this one has mainly been technical support. Uh, we, it started out with a series of conversations on how to begin a community garden. With who? Um, with uh, Justin and Nathan Picard, um, it was a vision that they had to kind of develop this um, community here. Um, it has, it's a traditional historic community that has over time um, been worn, say pretty worn. And so what they wanted to do is come in and revitalize it. And so the conversation with us started uh, with how to develop a community garden and get people involved and moving around again and just sort of you know change the neighborhood back and the name of this particular community garden is it's the brady heights community garden well we involve children because uh, we look at all of the statistical bad stuff about what's going to be happening in the future and we feel like that we need to get a hold of our young people and sort of involve them in being um, change agents for the future generations and connecting them back to what God gave us naturally, and that's the earth to be good stewards of it. Um, and I think by being a good steward of the earth, they learn to be a good steward for humanity. So. Well, it was, it was just one of those days where I was just really sort of like, oh wow, what, you know, is anybody gonna get this? Or, you know, kind of like one of those dark days you might go through. Well, well as we were in the garden at our Alcott School Garden, uh, one of the little girls as she was weeding and, and um, clearing the garden, she made a comment. Um, and she said, Mrs. Newsom, is it, um, does this mean that by us growing this food here, we can do the same thing at home? I said, yes, you, you can do the same thing at home. That's the purpose. And then she says, wow. She says, then what we're going to do is I'm going to tell my mama. And all we have to do now, if we grow our food, then my mama will have more food, more money for like meat. And that's the only thing we'll have to buy. And then, I mean, that that'll help us you know she she just it was just that that light bulb moment and just I mean that just brightened everything it, it it helped me to really know that we were on the right track About what that was she was age? getting yeah what was the age of that girl do you recall um she was she had to be fourth grade which was so awesome because I mean we've just had so many that that was just the the one thing that I can remember the most that was just she made the connection. So she was somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 12, depending she on when they about started 10 to, to stop 12. and all that. Right, wow. A little 11-year-old right. girl, the light bulb went on about the power and the security behind having local backyard crops. Yes, and, and the way she expressed it is that she didn't know that this was something that what, what, you know, was possible to be able to do um, if that garden had not been there. I mean. They never thought about food in, in that way before the garden was there. And so her, her deal was that it was, this is real food like you get in the grocery store, but we don't have to get it in the grocery store. We could just grow it. And I'm telling you, that has really inspired us a lot, you know, and everybody involved to go on from stories in the garden from our children. Yes, um, well we had a, a young man, he was 16 years old, and um, he had been going through troubles his whole life. Um, he was abandoned by his mother and, and his father was just um, 
let's just say he was out of it. <laughs> and and the children were pretty much raising themselves and eating anywhere they could. And so he got involved, you know, with gangs and um and it had gotten pretty bad. He was at the time that we met him, um he was put out of school um because he just could not function, you know, in um in 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 regular social atmospheres. So, um, and still, you know, leave, trying to transition from the gang um, to a normal life, because uh, he was tired of, um, of the life that he was living. So we bought him in and, um, and we had him to work on the farm and, you know, in the field where, I mean, it was like really hot and just something very different for this young man. Well, in the, in the midst of the garden, he, he just stopped for, for just a moment and and just said, I just realized that this is the first time in my life that I feel safe. I'm not having to look over my back or, you know, or just surround me. I, I know that when we go places, he was always looking around him and, you know, just something was unusual to me. He said, this is the first time I, don't, I felt I don't have to do that. I feel safe. The, the food stamp program or any kind of um, emergency food operation is just a temporary fix. Um, what's sustainable is what we were already given, and that was the garden. And that is the answer to food security, to economics, to peace of mind. I think the garden involves so many things that, that you forget until you get in that garden, until you realize, you know, that it's the most sustainable, and it was what we were given. And going back to it, it's just the most natural process. And so in some of these low-income income areas uh, and projects, if people have even patio space, they can grow healthy food in pots and container gardening, even if they don't have, you know, a, 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 a tenth of an acre or something to grow stuff on. So there, there's, it, there always is a way to grow it yourself, right? There's always a way to grow it yourself, and that's some of the technical advice that we give out. Uh, along with, we do a collection of, of pots um, so that people can you know, take and use the pot. Our organization works as an incubator to help people get started that may not be like real secure with doing a big plot like this or little boxes even. We tell people maybe start out slow, maybe a little container, and then when you feel comfortable with that, then move on to something else, and and really try to plant something that you like to eat that you would normally buy at the grocery store, and just realize the power of that seed being able to grow that yourself. One of the things that's major um, um, is 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 the nutrition policies that are made, you know, on nutrition through the farm bill that we have. And we need like grassroots people being involved with those um, policies as they're being developed to kind of give legislators um, a, a real idea of what regular local people want and what they need. And so um, in that way, our organization has been real involved with on the state level with uh, getting food stamps and the WIC program uh, started here in Oklahoma. It is a national program, but we don't have it as of yet. Um, we only have one um, farmer that takes the food stamps uh, at the farmer's market. And what we want to do is not just have farmer's markets and all these kinds of things that feed people um, of a certain income level. We want it accessible to all people. And for that to happen, we do need to involve um, programs like WIC and, um, and food stamps. So therefore, we're, we're one of the organizations that's, um, that's really entrenched on making that happen uh, in the state of Oklahoma. Well, we'd like to thank you so much for being involved in, 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 uh, from the Noosa Community Farms and the North Tulsa Eats Project. Um, it's been a pleasure.